Moving on to Savage Streets from 1984. Uh, this one is about a teenage vigilante seeking revenge on a group of violent thugs who raped her handicapped sister and killed one of her best friends. That's in a nutshell what it's about. It's a very 80s movie. When you watch it, you know, they got like the 80s rock and um, the hairdos and just, you know, it's just one of those movies that <laughs> you just look at it and you think 80s. You know, it's got Linda Blair in it. I, I don't know if this is... It has to be one of her most popular movies outside of The Exorcist. It starts off showing her nipples in a dress, so... <laughs> I have a fondness for tits. <laughs> and she does get them out in this movie. So, there you go. I, I promise I won't talk about tits anymore. <laughs> so, let's move on. <laughs> One thing about this movie... I'll, I'll just say overall, I, I do enjoy the movie. And I think this is the second time I've watched it. And it's just more... Like I said, it's it's very 80s. You, I wouldn't say there's a whole lot to it. You know, something happens, and then reta retaliation happens back and forth. There's a lot of cat fighting in the movie, which is fantastic. <laughs> it's got a lot of corny dialogue. John Vernon plays the most badass principal of all time in this movie. I, oh man, I loved his character, and it doesn't show up too much in the movie, just two or three times, but they're all epic scenes. Just the way he talks to his students is just commendable. <laughs> or, or, you know, even if they're not students, they're just on the school grounds. I mean, who can't like an insult like, go fuck an iceberg? <laughs> you, you never expect a principal to say that sort of thing. You know, the way he talks to Linda Blair's character is just... That's the type of thing people would be outraged about these days. It's just hilarious. Look, I'll, I'll let you speak a little bit as to what you thought of this movie before just, I go just, into... Just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so this so surprised no one. I've not seen this one before. I've honestly never heard of this one before. And it's just a somewhat depressing 80s movie. I, I I had no idea high school is back in the 80s with this wild, so I feel like I missed out on something, but that's okay. Well, they must have been... Sorry to interrupt, but I, I don't know if you've seen Class of 1984. It's got some similar gang, thug, high school type related issues, so... Yeah, so I just packed the thing is since I was... I, I, when I was in high school, I lived in a town of about 20,000 people. So I can imagine it's a lot, a lot more, shall we say, lively in a city like LA. And any major city, I can imagine it's a much more rowdy experience than you know, small town, mi you know, Midwest high schools. So, I, I mean, I found it interesting and, again, depressing. The fact that there's a student here who gets sexually, well, she gets raped. I was going to say sexually assault, but that's, that's beyond sexual assault. And pretty much as far as we can tell, and... It's not uncommon. Pretty much nothing's being done. Like, you know, some of the teachers try to reach out to um, Linda Bliss' character, but they don't have very good success and who can blame Linda Bliss' reaction. I mean, <laughs> and, you know, the principal just suspends her for getting into a fight that she was justified in getting into. So, I just... It's just a really... It, it's a really downbeat... I mean, it's an 80s movie. It's a... It, it, in a way, it's sort of a fun movie because that's a lot of the '80s vibe. But I mean, it's, uh, it's just really—it's not—it's not a very happy movie. I mean, you have a character who gets raped, and not only you know any character who gets raped is a bad thing, but this character is um, both deaf and mute, so she can't even—you know—that's the thing when the character starts, she can't even scream out. Um, I mean, <laughs> type of people who would do that to a woman like that's just horrendous, anyway. But you also have one of the characters who just pisses this one guy off so they throw her off of a um, overpass. Because that's how they do things in the city, apparently. And I have to admit, even the ending wasn't quite as satisfying as, as I was hoping. But I'll, I'll probably save that quote-unquote critique for a little later. Hmm. Well, actually, now, now that you brought up the, the whole deaf-mute thing, 
um, it reminded me of another movie that is technically, I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it is another vigilante movie from the 80s called Miss 45. And she's not deaf, but she is a mute. And she has the worst luck. She gets raped on her way home from work. And after that one, she gets home and there's like a, a thief in her apartment, like a totally different person. And he also tries to rape her. So talk about bad luck, <laughs> uh, especially being mute that you can't, you know, scream out or really do anything. But anyways, who knows? We may see that at some point. And by the way, that might this might be the most ideal role for Linnea Quigley, where she doesn't have to talk. <laughs> so, I mean, I uh, to be honest, I don't get the appeal of her. To like, she has this huge following. I've never found her. I mean, in, in terms of her acting, she's never been a great actor to me. I mean, I, look, I can watch movies with her in them, but I don't watch movies for her. So, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> Let's not say I can't like movies that she's in, or even movies that she has a, a lead role in, but... Yeah, I just... I don't get the appeal. Yeah, I mean... I, I, I feel like the revenge aspect of it towards the end, those scenes could have been somewhat better. It just feels like she disposes of them pretty quickly, outside of the main guy, but even then, a little... I don't know, I was just expecting a little bit more in that area, but overall, I'm happy with the movie. I was always engaged in the movie. I don't know, maybe have Fred Savage in the movie, that would have made it even funnier, having him in, because the movie's called Savage Streets, just have him play like some little kid drug dealer on the corner or something. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's not a whole lot for me to say about it. I mean, you know, the punks, you kind of want them to get their ass kicked and they do get their ass kicked and it's got corny dialogue but you know it's all fun enough for an 80s movie if if you know you leave the whole rape thing aspect out of it to be honest it's not exactly like the most graphic rape scene or anything it's it's nothing like you know, you you compare to watching 30 minutes of rape and I spit on your grave they just show a few quick moments of it in this movie it's 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 nothing all that outrageous in terms of those types of movies and you know there's some surprising things that happen in the movie like <laughs> the thing the, the scene where he throws the one woman over the um overpass so it was just <laughs> Yeah, when he's holding her in the air, you're like, is he gonna, is he gonna, like, uh, and then he just decides, yeah, I've, got, I've gotta do it, uh, he just throws her, it's, I don't know, it's, it's fucked up, but. <laughs> yeah, so I do what you mentioned, well, probably one of my standout scenes, and, and you mentioned this a bit earlier, but <laughs> the, um, the, the fight between Cindy and Branda in the, um, locker room, um, <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious, mainly because the, the I was actually I guess surprised it might not be the right word, but the language used was a bit stronger than what I would have expected, <laughs> and like the like the fight they get into lasts like you know lasts a bit of time, uh, it goes into even the shower portion of the locker room, and I especially like that scene. Oh, <laughs> there's some things in this movie like just. Let, let's just get these two chicks having a cat fight. Get them all wet. Like it, it's it's just so ridiculous, but at the same time, I'm so appreciative of these and, moments. And, and you have to love that one woman's point. Like she's pissed off because her boyfriend is paying more attention to this other chick, and she's blaming this other chick instead of her boyfriend. That's um um, that's that's a quality um logic right there. So it's also funny how she keeps on going instead of like blaming the boyfriend. She keeps on acting as if, like, Linda Blair's character is the one doing it all. I mean, she even interrupts one conversation where she's literally telling the guy to, like, fuck off. <laughs> and, and she's still like, stop talking to my man, you know. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Oh, by the way, and in that scene, I, th I think they had, a f they had a fight in that scene. Or actually, it might have been a separate scene, but they have a fight and she rips her top off in class. I'm like... What in these moments happened while I was at high school? 
I mean, these are the moments that I would have loved to see. Yeah, and actually, now you mention it, I felt really bad for that teacher. I believe it was a bad because um, that teacher had literally no control over anything that was going on in that classroom. Like, he could, like, I, I remember he was trying to break up the fight, but, you know, one of the taller kids was just, like, sort of pushing him back. And, like, I it, it, it was anything. the actual boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. It, it was the boyfriend. It, it was like, I, I want to see my girlfriend and this chick that I like go at it. And be- boyfriend of the Year award goes to that guy. <laughs> I mean, um, I've never found Linda Blair the most attractive of actresses from that time period. But she's, you know, she's so decently attractive. So, I mean, and uh, obviously in this movie, who doesn't want to see her kick the ass of that really annoying chick? I mean, it just, <laughs> in a movie like this, you can pretty much expect that, which reminds me of like the club scene later on, in which these um, guys are just harassing one of the women. I, I, I always laugh, at, by the way, when people are harassing a woman and then the woman fights back and the guys get all angry with her. Like, what you expect her to just take it? Like, you know, it, <laughs> defining yourself isn't like an insult to you, just accept it. So it just this so much of this um I guess this wild behavior that I would imagine is probably a little more I mean I'm nowadays I'm I'm hopefully about none of this stuff would be accepted. But I can imagine back in the seventies and eighties in bigger cities it wasn't really even uncommon. Even that scene at the beginning where the punks find that one guy who owes the money and they sort of uh assault the girlfriend for a bit. I mean, talk about some really dickish guys. But we did get some good action there. It's one of these movies that kind of toes between a 7 and an 8 for me. And I'm going to... I mean, there's just a lot of good scenes in here. Even though the movie as a whole, it has some issues. But... I'll, I'll give it an 8 out of 10, if only just for the fact that John Vernon's principal character threw it over the top for me. So, 8 out of 10, all up in this bitch. Yeah, so I think my, I guess my, my main issue with this one, one, I find it, I find it quite depressing most of the time, um, urban city life, the fact that you know, half these characters just want to, you know, get out of there. And you know, go someplace bad, and who can blame them if this is what they have to put up with? And also, who can blame the people who live in a society for being, for acting out in the way they do? It just the whole system is problematic there. So it just—it's a really depressing movie, and uh, most movies that deal with rape would probably be depressing. Um, and then the ending isn't quite as satisfying as I would hope. I mean, she does get the revenge, I, I guess, but. It just, it just, it doesn't have that s- same um, impact that I would hope it would. I mean, it, it's a well-made movie. It's a quite a few enjoyable scenes in here. I just, I can't really imagine going back to this one all that often. But I think I'll probably give this one a seven out of ten. Actually, one thing I thought of um, in the movie, there's a scene where the principal suspends Linda Blair's character from high school. And it reminded me <laughs> of, like, d- do any kids actually care that they get suspended outside of the fact that their parents might be upset with them? I mean, it's, it's, it's literally a free holiday from school. In fact, the ultimate insult to me was the fact that I once got into a fight at school with this one guy. He was, he was just constantly being a dick to me, so one, one day I just you know, had enough of it. It was this guy who played football. And I'm actually just as big of a guy, but I I wasn't really the type to play football. Anyways, he he was always being a dick, and eventually I had enough, and then we started beating up each other. And (laughs) we, we both got sent to the principal's office. But we had like a a fill-in principal or something at that time, like the one that we had either quit or was away for some reason, and so we had kind of like an acting principal. In any case, it seemed like when he was talking to us, he didn't quite have full power. So he said, you're both suspended, but you still come to school. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> I don't get the free holiday, but you say I get suspended. This makes absolutely no fucking sense. 
So that outside of him saying you're suspended, there was no suspension. It made no sense. And funnily enough, both me and the other guy who were fighting, we we just both left the office laughing about it. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I don't know. It was just um, just a stupid situation. Yeah, I don't believe I've ever gotten suspended, so unfortunately, I cannot relate. You're a straight A student who would never was, be out of line like that. It was A's and B's, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. I did. I did get a C in one of my math classes, so that's. Oh. I know. I hate. I always. I always hated math, though, so it's okay. <laughs>